Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel and I am here to talk to you about some life lessons that I have learned since I quit my management consulting job. So in case you haven't seen it, several years ago, I quit my job and the video went somewhat viral. If you've watched some of my videos, I reference this a lot, but I realized that I never did a follow-up to that. So what happened after I quit? Did everything work out the way that I wanted it to? Were there struggles or hardships or things that I experienced that I didn't necessarily foresee? And yes, in fact there were so I thought that I would go ahead and just walk you through some of the little insights that I have learned along the way since I quit my job and I explored the world of entrepreneurship so let's just get right into it the first insight that I want to share has to do with realizing that the passion that you had the creativity that you had around this thing that you wanted to pursue is actually going to end up feeling just like any other job now of course there's going to be some benefits to it because it does lean more into some of your creative creativity or some of your natural interests. But at the end of the day, once you associate income to something that is a creative outlet for yourself, the relationship to it will naturally change. So for several years, I was a full-time Instagram content creator, influencer, whatever word you want to call it. And I was making pretty good income. I was making six figures in brand deals. But what ends up happening is that this thing that you were doing on the side, whenever you felt like it, this thing that you were doing just to be able to express yourself then became something where you had to show up every single day even if you didn't feel like it. So if you are someone who is planning to quit your job and is planning to go all in on a creative endeavor as your full-time job, please go ahead and pursue it if that is your calling. But I would also caution that if this is the sole passion that you have and this is where all of your creativity is going into, I would actually recommend having an outlet that is not something that you would monetize. Just ensure that you have an outlet that remains fun. So if I could go back in time, I would just make sure that I carved out time for different hobbies or different interests for myself. The next insight that I have is realizing and recognizing that your next step is not your final step. Several years later, I have taken so many turns in the path that I was on that felt really natural to me. And here I am now years later, actually back into content creation, but in a different format with a different intention and a different why. So if you're someone who is going to quit your job, thinking about quitting your job, or maybe you already have, and you're kind of looking for some clarity, just understand whatever your next step is, isn't necessarily going to be the end all be all. It is just a stepping stone to take you to where you ultimately are meant to be. This next step is merely just an iteration into that next path of yours. One thing that I actually coach my clients on is setting a life intention, and it's an exercise that I actually do through a workshop. If you want to learn more about it, you can sign up for my mailing list and I will do these periodically for free because I would like to really help others gain some clarity and some focus into the life path that they're on. Now, when I left my management consulting job, I dove into content creation, more specifically on Instagram. Now, at the time I thought, okay, this is going to be my full-time job forever. This is just what I'm going to do. But it's been years since then and I have taken so many different turns since that time in my life. I actually did that full time for several years and I got burnt out by it, which is another insight that I will delve into coming up. But I was doing that for several years and then I gained certain interests in other areas and there were other things that I was curious about. And so that's when I actually started working for a startup in crypto because I had such an interest in crypto. And one thing that I really loved about that position is is the variety of it. It was a startup, so you had to wear a lot of different hats and you had a lot of different responsibilities, which I love. And so now from all of those skills that I learned from my Instagram content creation days to then working in crypto to now, all the dots are starting to connect with one another. And now I'm back into content creation, but in a different format, a different why, and a different intention into why I am showing up here. Now, this next insight is about burnout. So when I was in management consulting, and if you have been in consulting or have worked at a startup, you realize all of the hours that go into working for your clients. And me as a consultant now independently, I also still run into this here and there, but it's something that I definitely have more mindfulness around.
around. But burnout is so many different layers. There's the external factors that cause burnout and there's the internal. A lot of times it can be so easy to just fixate on the external, on all of these factors that we might not necessarily have the most control over. So there might be lack of resources at the employer that you have. So you have a really small team, but lots of different priorities. So you're ending up having to work so many different hours. You might have a boss that has extremely high expectations for you, where you end up having to work a lot of different hours because your boss is always on and you feel the sense that you have to be on at all times. And there's also this sense of fear too, I think that can lead to burnout. I know what the job market is like, the industries are really tight. And while I do think that there are some companies that are starting to hire more now, there's still a lot of shrinkage in a lot of different industries. And so I think that a lot of times psychologically people can think, oh, well, I don't wanna get let go. I don't wanna be a part of that layoff. So I'm going to do everything I can, be the best employee that I can and put in all of these hours and you end up just burning yourself out. So there's all of these external factors that we can really fixate on. But to be honest, from my experience, burnout has come from both sides of the coin. So there have been those external factors, but there's also been internal factors as well. Through all of the work that I have done on myself, through all the reading, through all the studying that I have done when it comes to burnout, for me, I tend to almost inflict some burnout onto myself because I lacked boundaries. I lacked listening to my needs. I lacked listening to my inner voice. I know what my limits are. And I think all of you know what your limits are as well. When it comes to burnout, you can kind of get a sense of when you're feeling overworked, when you're feeling tired, when you're not following your routine, like you normally do, you're not making time for the things that once brought you joy because you have to finish your email, empty out your inbox, finish that project, do all of these different things for work. But at the end of the day, all of that signifies that one, you might not know what your boundaries are, or two, you're not listening to what your boundaries are, even if you do know them. So if you are leaving your consulting job or leaving whatever job that you might have, and you are striking off on your own, just be really mindful of the symptoms of burnout. And you can watch one of the videos that I have created around burnout to help you along the way. The next insight that I have has to do with systems. Systems are so important. When you are in a corporate setting or when you are in a job where you have an employer, where you have a team, there are certain SOPs or standard operating procedures for work that needs to be done. You know exactly where to check certain data. You know that there's always a weekly meeting where you need to report back on XYZ pieces of information to the team. There's all of these structures that are put into place. So that is one thing that I think is actually a really good thing about working in a corporation or working for a business is that there is an operations or there's a system in place, or at least there should be. And I think that when you are working on your own after you quit your job and you are maybe going into entrepreneurship or some sort of endeavor on your own, it's really important to have a system for yourself. And so for me, I tried various different project management systems and tools and tried different types of platforms. You name it, I have probably tried it, but Notion has a always been something that I come back to because the databases are really clear cut. It just is so easy to be able to house all of the information that you need in your life. So there's all kinds of ways that you can use Notion as a central source of truth for your personal life. And of course, for your professional life, you can use it for absolutely everything. I use it for my content calendar, not just to keep track of what I'm posting when, but also in the pages inside of Notion, I keep track of the scripts. I keep track of the images that I'd like to use any b-roll that I'd like to use it's just such a good way to really have a repository for everything in your life but if it's not notion for you really just make sure that you have some sort of system in place to keep track of everything that's going on in your life because if you don't you are going to find yourself always constantly searching for resources for tools for things that you have already looked up and it's just going to get really chaotic especially if you're someone who uses your notes app in your iphone that's something that i used to use and it is just chaos in there random thoughts are in there that sometimes just don't make sense if i look at it even a couple days later and lastly keep a schedule for yourself this goes back to 
the corporate world. In the corporate world, you generally would probably have like a 9 a.m. standard weekly meeting that you have on Monday mornings or on Friday mornings or some sort of cadence of weekly recurring meetings with the team that you're working with. But when you're working for yourself, there's really no one that holds you accountable to it. So it's super important to have a schedule for yourself because there are two different extremes that can happen when you don't have a schedule for yourself. If you don't have any kind of schedule, you can end up working day and night. You can wake up in the morning thinking about all of the business ideas and things that you need to execute on. And you can take that through all the way through the evening because you're so passionate about it. You're really excited about it. So it's very possible to work into the late night hours. The other side of that is if you don't have a schedule, you can find yourself waking up at various times during the morning or in the afternoon. You can maybe end up just doing errands during the day and you end up maybe just checking a couple emails thinking that you're working and you end up not really being as productive or efficient with your time by having no schedule. So really understanding what your guardrails are of what are your open hours of work? When are you most efficient? Are you a morning person? Are you an afternoon person? Are you an evening person even? So find the hours in which you are naturally most alert, naturally most awake, and try to utilize those in the best way that you can. So in your schedule, in the hours when you are most efficient, when you're most alert, make sure you have your phone away, make sure you're not checking email if it's not something that is necessarily urgent, make sure you aren't checking social media, and really do a lot of deep focus work during this time so that no matter what else happens during the day, you know that you have gotten the most that you needed to get done within the time where your brain is the most awake. So I hope that these tips helped you if you are someone who is looking to quit your job or quit your job and just looking for some insight around what some of the lessons are when it comes to quitting your job. And if you have made it this far, thank you so much for being here. Please make sure to subscribe to this channel. And if you missed it in in the last video, I do actually offer one-on-one -on -one coaching now for anyone who is looking to pivot, anyone who is looking for a career evolution, and anyone who is really looking to lean into their most fulfilled life.